<laughs> Do we address Mitch at all? Yeah, yeah. every now and then. It's happening. It's great. He's part of it now. Hello and welcome to the WePC podcast. We are back for episode two. Are we excited? I'm very excited. You know, I would hope you would be. I'm loving it. Yeah, great. I woke up this morning and I was like, because I, I watch quite a few podcasts and they'll be like, oh, welcome to episode one and their first one. And then because I've watched them for so long, they're like, oh my God, we've reached our 200th podcast. Do you ever think we're going to get to like episode 100? I want us to stop specifically at 73. 73? Yeah, that's why. Any right. specific I said reason as to why 73? Oh, that we'll is, hold yeah. on to 100. No, nah, I was just picking a random number off the top of my head. Yeah. Perfectly honest with you. Fair enough. People are like, what went on in that podcast? Somewhere went on behind the scenes exactly. to, for them to have stopped it. So we're in agreement we stop it at number 73 then? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Shout, fair enough. Um, so in this podcast, we are going to be talking about remasters, everything to do with them and everything about them. So we're going to start with our first question, which is which game do you personally believe deserves a remaster that obviously hasn't already been remastered so we'll go to you first mr smith oh that's me um so my my game that i want to see remastered and i'd love to see it remastered on next gen is splinter cell chaos theory <laughs> nice. because it's arguably one of the best xbox 360 titles that came out um and i think splinter cell has just not been done justice so I mean, they're, they're going really big with Tom Clancy at the minute with like Wildlands and then mm -hmm. Ghost Recon's coming back, I think, and all of that sort of stuff. So it makes sense because they had um, Sam in Wildlands as like a cameo. I've never played Splinter Cell oh, in my life. You've never played Splinter Cell? I've heard about it's it. It's allegedly the best... What, what, what sort of game would you call it? The genre? It's, it's a like stealth, stealth, stealth game. Yeah. It's allegedly the best. Uh, spe specifically, um, what's the one you Chaos said? Theory. Chaos Theory. Yeah. Which is the third game in the series of Splinter Cell. And mm. it genuinely is a really, really good game. Like, they've started obviously bringing out Hitman's, and yeah. they're bringing out another Hitman game. And yeah, really liked uh, Absolution. I thought that was amazing. And if you can take that and apply it to Splinter Cell, as well as applying like an open world structure that you had in Wildlands, mm. maybe not as big as that, but I think that would be just amazing. And actually remastering Splinter Cell for like next generation and bringing in all the bells and whistles for it. Is Tom Clancy also... Um... Tom Clancy's dead. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so Tom Clancy, it, it's also... Is, is the Division Tom Clancy? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Rainbow, Rainbow Six. Six. Yeah, Rainbow Six. Is good. I've not played the new Rainbow Six, um, but I've, Rainbow Six Vegas back in the day was so good. Um, and I remember that's when I picked between. I, I remember going to the going to game, and it was between Splinter Cell and Rainbow Six. Um, and then I ended up getting Rainbow Six Vegas, and I played that a lot. I don't think you could have gone wrong with either of those games. No. Yeah, both fair. Uh, I like, pretty great. Rainbow Six was amazing. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory was amazing. Like they really hit quite a good patch mm -hmm. with Tom Clancy, and then. Advanced Warfighter came out for Ghost Recon and it just kind of came crashing down. Oh no. Uh, but it's no, wasn't back. Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter Xbox 360 title back in like 2007. That was Something a like that. really good one. No, I'd always thought that was really good. It was awful. meant to have been good. I, mean, the, they like, I didn't enjoy it. They, I didn't enjoy no, it. No, I didn't. But I guess it's one of those which are like critical darling that yeah. everybody hated to play, um, which is just a Tom Clancy game. In, around the 2007 mark to be honest but did they it seems like that sort of era they were making like the, the games are kind of similar like they are now with ubisoft but like ghost recon's fairly ta uh, ta tactical technical mm. it's very Tactical. strategical yeah strategic and vegas as well yeah vegas is the, there's not a whole lot of planning but there is planning of like how are we going to breach this room yeah yeah Which and then the same with chaos theory there the, yeah. the, all those games seem to be a very there's so many good Tom Clancy games. Like the Division, I think is great. Division was absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's just it, the problem with the Division is it's incredible throughout the whole game, and then you get to the end of it, and it's just dead. Like there's not too much to do. There's not too much to, to go for. So when I finished the Division Two, which came out was it the beginning of this year or the end of last year, it came out. It with me and my friends years, played it. Know. So we played the first game, and at the end of it, there's not much to do except to go to the Dark Zone, which is like a PvP area. It's, it's not the greatest. Um, so they were like, they've brought raids into it. So the whole point was you get to the end of Division 2 and then you go and do these massive raids, but then it was delayed for like three months. So at that point, it's kind of like, we've all moved on to different games now. We don't play it anymore. So we, yeah, I've not played, I've not gone back to the Division. Division 2 might be great right now, but who knows? There is a game that I've just thought of that has just delved from the deepest parts of my memory and it was Tom Clancy Hawks. <laughs> I never even I heard of that. I forgot that existed. Oh, it's basically a fighter pilot sim. 
and it's amazing. Like I loved playing it, and it's literally just speaking about Tom Clancy has brought that back up. And I, they brought like a Ace Combat Skies Unknown thing out, which was meant to be like a new Hawks, and it was just atrocious, <laughs> like compared to how I remember Hawks. But yeah, for me, Splinter Cell Splinter Chaos Theory Cell. Need, needs to be remastered in some way. Yeah. How would, how would you have that improved? Would you, would you, so it'd be exactly the same game or? No. Um, I yeah, think, would you want a remaster or a remake, really? See, yeah, that's the thing. Because remasters, I always think, are a bit of a cop-out. Yeah. Like, just because they can do it. Yeah. They don't really change much. It's just the money grab. I'd love it to be a remake, but, you know, the question was remaster. But, you know, I think if you're only releasing a game with updated graphics and stuff, I think you need new story elements. You need new features. I think that's what. Yeah. You definitely need to have a remake. So I'd like to see it in the same vein, but not necessarily the exact same game. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like uh, Final Fantasy VII. It's not a, re- it's not a remake. Uh, it's not a remaster. It's a full remake. It's not even... So- it's got the same story, but it, the entire preface of the game is completely different to what it was. And it means that even though you know what's coming with the story, they've added new bits in the story. Not that it's going to dramatically change the story. You, know, you still know how it's going, to be, it's going to start and end and that horrible thing that happens in the middle... That, that's still going to happen, but there's different plot points that deviate from the original narrative, and it does it in a way that isn't like, oh, you ruined my favorite game from 10 years, where there is still people who think that because they just wanted a straight remaster. But I think the way that they've done it is really, really good. And if more game companies start to do that, then we might start seeing some better games because I know you're not a massive fan of Spyro being remastered, but personally, I thought it was great because it's a childhood game. I don't think like you need to change too much from that. Same with Crash Bandicoot, they remade that. Uh, well, they made that into a remaster, and then they've seen the success from that, and now they're making the next Crash Bandicoot. So it's it's more a, it's it's more, whether game companies want to take a gamble because it's like obviously a they point. Play, they play on your nostalgia mostly. So it's like we're going to remaster this game from this era. Um, it's easier for them to remaster it, see if it's still popular today, and then do a remake or an, a sequel. Same with Ratchet and Clank, they remastered, and then there was a huge success made a film which the film was all the cutscenes from the game <laughs> still don't agree with that and now they're making the next game so it's one of those like do you play it safe and make the remaster or do you do the remake we all knew final fantasy 7 was going to be a success it's one of the most critically acclaimed games games of all time so they don't have to take a gamble they knew it was going to be successful so yeah. it's one of those arguments really but okay what is your i'm going to rephrase the question which game deserves a remaster or a remake I'm not sure. You're not sure? I'm not sure. Not sure. Do you want me to give some time to think and I'll tell you mine? Yeah. Okay, so in the last podcast we talked about this and I talked about like not many people have played this game and it really stresses me out. Jack and Daxter. Yeah. Okay, I've, so... I've, I've, I've played it. Yeah, so I said that you've got Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, and then... Uh, what was the other one? Crash Bandicoot? Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot. There were the three kind of crooks and then you've got, you've got other games, but in terms of what you would pick, you would either pick... Rush and Clank, Jack and Daxter, and then Crash Bandicoot was like on the side, but it was, it was normally between those two, and so many people have not played Jack and Daxter, and it stresses me out, because it was such a good game. Until you mentioned it to me the other day, I had no clue what it was. That's, <laughs> that hurts me. Yeah, that hurts that me I a lot. I had no clue what it was. I religiously played Ratchet and Clank games, and oh, there was another game that I can't remember the name of that was Sly? like Ratchet and Clank. It's got Sly Cooper, no, maybe. No. No. It was like Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, it was like the same... So you're sure, it, you're sure and... it wasn't Jack and Daxter? No, I'm, I'm positive just... it wasn't Jack and no, Daxter. Okay. Um, yeah, Jack and Daxter was really great. So like the first two games were just like standard adventure games. Go to the island, get the thing, do the stuff for the guy. And that was it, kind of thing. But then the f- third one, you kind of like, there's this energy thing called like, I don't even know what the energy is called. It's been so long. But you turn to like this shadow version of yourself. And it was really cool. And you're in this middle of this city and you're like hoverboards and stuff. And like back in the day, the graphics were like mind blowing. And I was like, this is unreal. And they've remade like everything. So they've, they've re-released it onto PlayStation 4, but it's the original game. Um, so they've not actually remastered anything. There's no improved graphics or anything like that. So I want to see a full remaster or remake because they're doing it for everything else. They're doing Spyro, they're doing Crash Bandicoot, they're doing Ratchet and Clank. Where's my Jack and Daxter remaster? You naughty dog. <laughs> what how, are you saying? How it long? Naughty sorry. dog, sorry. It's Naughty Dog that made that, wasn't it? Yeah, I, th- I believe they, so. I imagine they'd just pass it on to Blue Point again to remaster it. How long do you think it's going to take for them to remake Viva Pinata? Viva Pinata. Um, isn't that that Bug Snacks game? I think so. It's the well, you basically that's, run that's around as attempt. a pinata. Like, that's all I remember it as. Viva Pinata. It's a solid game, that. Is it a solid game? Although they did bundle it with the Xbox to try and push it. So, 
You know, it's like with uh, the PlayStation when they push Little Big Planet. Except that was good. <laughs> Except right. the other thing, yeah, is well regarded title. I I hate I hate it. There's some games I just hate. And Viva Pinata is one of those games. Why is I that? just hate that Viva Pinata. Pinata. I, mean, it is I feel like game. everyone seems to have played Viva Pinata. I feel like because when you got an Xbox 360, everyone had it. I never played it. Like I, I never had Viva Pinata. My, all my friends are like, it's such a good game. I'm like, is it though? I remember when... I know, remember what. <laughs> Are you okay, Alexa? Are you? Do you need to talk to someone? She's been left in this office for a while, to be honest. Does anyone know what that even was? <laughs> I have no clue what that even was. <laughs> it sounded like she's just got a virus. Some, right. some USB device is being connected or something. How can you connect a USB device to an Alexa? It's got no USB port. I feel like we should know that. We are the tech company, but we don't. <laughs> Um, yeah, so for me personally, Jack and Dax is probably the one that I would like to see remastered. I think it's just not popular enough for them to do that. I think that's the problem. And that's like like you've said before, when they do these these remasters, so like they did the Crash Trilogy and the Spyro Trilogy, it, it is just testing the waters of should we release another game? How popular is this? That's what they did with the Master Chief Collection for mm. Halo re-released all of them everyone got so hyped for it it's now just come out on pc and everyone's got so hyped for it again and now they're bringing out the next halo series again so. halo is just always going to be popular though, isn't it it's not like there's no gamble taking on that game it's it is diehard fans even though like the story now is not the best <laughs> um ever since you know bungie was left like left the game it's it's been a bit of bit of a ropey one but um it's always going to be popular there's always going to be fans it's it's kind of the only reason that people buy play, uh, xbox, xbox over playstations nowadays is for that and gears war i guess but you can get that on pc now so it's it's one of those yeah, we can yeah. stop P- seeing people get playstations because they can get xbox games on pc i don't know um halo is their poster child though isn't it yeah 100 percent. but even like what even is playstations anymore I, it's not, it I mean, used, it's good. It to be it's uncharted. good that you can't say there is one. I think yeah, mm. because there's, there's so, so many exclusives. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you, you can pick through about a good ten or twenty. Yeah, I can't. But think originally, of one off the top of originally, my head. but <laughs> it used to be like uncharted, but uh, heavy Gran, rain, Gran Turismo, I think stuff like that. But it's honestly now like I, I mean, the reason I switched to a PlayStation initially was to get certain games. Um, Final Fantasy X Remaster was on PlayStation. It's, it's now switched over to Xbox after the license had run out or something. Um, it was mainly for the the DLC that you get for, for that you get before everyone else because it's ridiculous. It's still to this day you like DLC on Xbox is like four months late. Yeah, but like four months is a massive. See, I remember buying my PS4 for is it purposefully for Spider Man for that game like. Was that, not, was that not on Xbox? No, it's PS4 exclusive. Oh. I literally went out and bought as soon as it came out just to play that game. Mm. And I wasn't disappointed. So it's excited the most for expensive game. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Because it's a bit like blurred line between that game. Like nobody kind of knew if it was like a DLC or yeah. an expansion or its own standalone. Apparently it's its own standalone. I'm not sure it'll be a long as long. No, I can't imagine it will because it's just it's, it's, it is a tag on at yeah. the end of the Spider-Man game, and they are still doing Spider-Man Two. But I mean, it's going to be interesting because after the success of Into the Multiverse, Miles Morales is known now. Like yeah. he used to be just be comic book nerds who knew Miles Morales. Yeah. But now he's he's in everywhere, so everyone knows who he is, and it's going to be interesting to see how it performs. Yeah, should be good. Do you have a remaster or a remake? I, I just wanted to touch on, so Sega came out with Persona 4, I think it was about a month ago. Probably yeah, they released it on now. Switch as well, didn't they, this time? Uh, no, it's just... They've released some Persona game on Switch, because I've seen it on the store, no, it was interesting. Perso- they've, they've, Nintendo have advertised Persona 5 since the Switch was ever announced, and mm-hmm. there still isn't a Persona on Switch. But Persona 4 Golden was exclusive to the Vita, yeah. and Persona 4 was originally on the PS2. So they finally brought it to PC. But it wasn't a, re- a remaster, which it should have been, in my opinion. It was just a direct port. Okay. So it's like the graphics are exactly the same. It's high resolution, but Not a different. game like that, I, I really want to see... I mean, this, again, isn't technically a remaster. It's more like a port. Mm-hmm. But um, Shin Megami Tensei? Uh, yeah, I, that's what I just Googled. That is coming to the Nintendo Switch sometime in 2020. Um, and everyone's kicking off because Persona 5 isn't coming instead. 
So yeah, it's, sorry, it's, so, it's, it's such a mess that game. It's like some of it is on Switch and some of it's on PlayStation, and it's... now there's bits on PC. Again, that was Persona uh, Sega just testing the waters. They're like, how well does this sell? And they've just passed half a million copies, which mm. is good. But I would I would have liked to have seen that remastered mm. rather than just a direct just port. a direct me port. sat here yawning because I'm the only person in this entire office without a switch. So like I don't <laughs> have a switch. Chris doesn't oh, have a switch. Okay. No. I, it's just me. I, I wish I did. I've started to um, buy games on Switch just for the ease of like if I'm going somewhere and I can play it. So like I know The Witcher looks incredible on PS4 or on PC, but being able to play it whenever I want is great. Because if I download it on PS4 and I get really really into it, but then I go somewhere for two weeks, I'm gonna have like oh, I don't really want to play it, but now I can. So. It's horrible quality, but apart from that, I mean, if the Switch, I'm still waiting for like a Switch Pro to come out. But we'll, yeah. For me, The Witcher 3 could be in like four polygons and I'd still <laughs> play it because the story is just the best yeah, thing. I really it. do need to play it. I've, I've, every time I mention that I have not played throughout the whole, the whole of it, everyone keeps shouting at me. So, yes. Okay, so they're, they're the games that we think deserve a remaster. Which remake then has impressed you the most that you have played? I obviously have already said Final Fantasy VII was probably the the greatest i was at final fantasy 10 or final fantasy uh, not final fantasy 10 final fantasy 7 which was great because that was a complete remake my favorite game of all time is final fantasy 10 i've played that through on every platform it's i, I don't know when i'm going to stop to be honest because i bought it on ps2 and then i bought ps4 just so i could play it and then i bought it on pc uh, so i could play on my laptop on a plane when i went to america once and then i bought it on switch so if it comes out on my phone in a few weeks probably buy it again um and it was a, a complete remaster it wasn't a remake they changed nothing about it and that's when that argument comes in, I was really happy. If they tried to do to that game what they did to Final Fantasy VII, I would have kicked off. I would be like, absolutely not. Don't touch my don't touch my child like this. So that's where I'm like, because I enjoy Final Fantasy VII, but I can see how people could get angry. Because mm. if that happened to mine, if I if I waited like 15 years or however long it's been wait for wait for the remaster, um, I would I would have not been happy. But... I think the the thing with remasters is, and it seems to be the way that they are. Like if it's done in japan mm -hmm. it's going to be a good remaster or remake because yeah. you've got the final fantasies resident chris, is, evil chris 2, is shaking his head there resident evil 2 i'd arguably say is, is a very 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 good remake very good um which was which was mine <laughs> can't have it chris <laughs> and, um, but like i think if it comes out of that area because the time and dedication they actually put into games in the first place and the teams that they build around those games that will always have passion for those games. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think for something like the Call of Duty series, because it's been passed through so many studios and it's been passed yeah. through so many people, is it's a total cop out whenever they bring a remaster out. Uh, yeah, Modern Warfare Two. They didn't bring the multiplayer. They brought the campaign. What was that about? That was that really stressed me out. One of two is one of the greatest multiplayer with the, games. With the asking us there. Of all times. No, that was me looking directly into the camera in case for some reason someone works for Activision and wants to be, wants to get offended because how can you, yeah. <laughs> how can you remaster Modern Warfare 2 and not do the multiplayer? Like, that makes, that makes no sense. So, yeah. I, okay, I, so, no, I, I get why they didn't bring the multiplayer in. No, I completely it's to get push, it. It's just to push walls. Though, yeah, I it? completely get it because everyone would have moved from playing the... Modern Warfare multiplayer to back to playing Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. Yeah, well, when they remastered COD 4, they did that. Yeah, and it split the community so much, <laughs> and they've just come out and they just. I don't had want four that. hours playtime on Infinite Warfare because COD 4 came out. I didn't even start it. I just threw that disc in the middle. I and played. Went, I'm not going for this. I played COD 4 and then I played Blackout. They, that was the only two. I, I don't think I actually leveled past level 10 on Infinite Warfare, which is sad because I played the I played the beta for a while, but then I was just like, what's the point playing this when this exists? Yeah. So And then they turned Modern Warfare into a microtransaction hell, so here we are. So is yours Resident Evil then, would you say? Mine would be Resident Evil 2. Yeah, I think that is it just blew me out of the water. Like, I didn't expect it to be good because of the way Resident Evil games were going. Um, but... Oh, Chris doesn't agree with me on that. Seven was good. Yeah, but everything else. After, like, have you played the original Resident Evil Two then? Yeah. Yeah. An old, old console. Thing is, when I was younger, we didn't have like proper good consoles. We had to wait like twenty years for them to depreciate in value, and then I had to play them. So I had a PS One yeah. when I was in like year ten. Like it was really sad. So like <laughs> I first got into those sort of games really late. Which is why, like, I don't have massively fond memories of them all. Mm. But at the same time, I can appreciate how good 
in comparison that remaster was to other remasters. Yeah. Like, it really was just stunning what they did with it. Does it play differently then? Because I know the first Resident Evil is very static camera and yeah. then you move around, which it doesn't... Plays very differently, but as well, it's like when you say like with Final Fantasy VII, it's not necessarily a remaster. It is a little bit of a remake in the terms that they're adding more mechanics and they're changing camera points and mm. they're updating the graphics and adding a bit more into it, which for me just makes it a more enjoyable experience. Yeah. I think you have to, you just can't cop out with that sort of stuff because there's such a beloved community behind it you can't not do it justice no. or else you're going to lose a lot of yeah, a lot of fan base for the next one okay yeah. Capcom really know what they're doing there mm. I think with because um, they've just been doing success after success like even bringing Monster Hunter World which is not a, not a remaster or a remake but they've done well there and um, yeah I think it, it, that's a tough choice isn't it when do you upset the original fans of the game, Resident Evil 2 and the first Resident Evil, by... It's, I've known this, it's always a static camera, then you move the player around, we're going to completely swap the mechanics, which w you would say are the crux of the game. Like that's, I know that's how that game is. Yeah. Are you doing a disservice to the original fans there, but, or is it is it the lesser of two evils because you have to appeal to this is how one games play now i think i don't think you're doing a disservice to the fans i think you're doing a disservice to the game if you yeah. do that i think the fans themselves because it's moved so much with times and it's progressed so much and obviously so much has changed since the original resident evil 2 the fans would i don't think a straight remaster or a port would have done either the fans or the game justice because you're just bringing out a cheap chip ch ch there a cheap just a money trick. Grab. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. Because you're not really... I get, like, you're not sticking to the original game, but at the same time, the industry's moved so much ahead of itself yeah. that it would almost be a disservice to the fans to not update with the times. Okay. Yeah, because right. you've always got that. You can just go play the original. You can just go play the original, <laughs> if not, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying there, but it's one of those, like, does a game want to be exactly how it was or does it want to move with the times, like you say? Keep, I'm just going to keep using it as an example because it's a perfect example. Final oh, Fantasy VII went from a turn-based combat system, which is very outdated now. You very rarely see games nowadays unless they're purposely trying to replicate that old RPG style. Mm. They won't really go for turn-based anymore, and Final Fantasy games haven't really since like since the early ones in the late two like 2009 maybe um, when they brought Final Fantasy XIII. Um, everything's kind of more live action now, and that's what they did with Final Fantasy VII, which is a massive gamble because they've gone from a turn-based combat system which is priority pri primarily what final fantasy is to yeah. a full active time battle but they also included an option where it, it kind of was like turn-based but not really like your character would fight with like the live action stuff like live battle and then you could just input commands it wasn't exactly the same thing so it draws the line between is this what you should be doing or is this not what you should be doing should you include both options for people who want the static camera and people that don't want the static camera so don't know. Um, so, what would your uh, remake that's impressed you? Would you would you just agree that it would be Resident Evil then, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've not. I don't. I can't say I've played many remakes or remasters, especially because a lot of them tend to be console. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that true. sort of thing. PC, it's more revivals. So, like Hitman, I think they've done a good job there. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see you brought up Rainbow Six Vegas before. Yeah. I would like to see that remastered. That would be great. It was one that suffered from that era when games were like murky brown and yellow. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but the colours are just awful. But that game specifically I'd like to see remade. But I can't off the top of my head think of any games that have impressed me. I, I don't think I've played that many remasters or remakes. Yeah, that's fair. Well, that, that shows the difference between PC, PC and, console, and console really, doesn't it? So. Console's ready for its next gen. PC's not even got the two yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, but the thing with, I mean, and this is what we said before is you can just go play the original and half the time, especially when it comes to PC, I mean, PCs, are, especially PC players, are quite purists. Oh, yeah. So they'd always be like, <laughs> just play the original. And then when it comes to like a game like Deus Ex, it's install this mod and this mod and that's yeah. it. Just keep it, keep it vanilla. Yeah. So okay. All right. that's just the way the PC is, I guess. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about which games we think deserve a remaster and a remake and which remakes we 
have enjoyed and which game remakes obviously we haven't played. Um, our final question, which is a very interesting one. This is our this is our pitching side of the uh, of the podcast. Oh. What I'm going to ask you both to do is to pick one of your favorite games that you think deserves a Hollywood blockbuster chance. Obviously, we've got the obvious things like The Witcher, which has now got its own Netflix series. Mm. Very successful. Coming back for a second season, which is always great. Um, sometimes I feel like a Netflix series is better than a film because you get more content, but that's just me. Um, so, yeah, we're not talking about Netflix series. We're talking about a one-off. Maybe if you, well, you get the trilogy if you want, but we were talking about a blockbuster film. So I'm going to start with you because you look very ready right I'm now. I'm so ready for this. Okay, so go on. So like, I went through a few options. <laughs> like, I... Th- I I have always wanted to see a Gears of War movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> always wanted to see a Gears of War movie. Was a Gears of War movie not in the works for the longest time? Yeah, like it got announced in like 2012. Yeah, it, it was a long might time be ago. happening. And now, apparently, last year, uh, Universal have taken up the option on it. So it's currently in pre pre development and delayed due to COVID 19. But I just really want to see a Gears of War film, but that's not the one I've chosen. Okay. Like, but the, Google does say that. It's still kind of been worked on, but apparently Dave Batista is trying absolutely everything. See, when it got announced, there was one guy whose name just kept cropping up every single year, and one guy who wanted it, and it was Dave Batista. Which Dave is the Batista. perfect, perfect, yeah, absolutely perfect. For Marcus Phoenix, Dave Batista, you can't get any better, I think. But all these articles are saying basically that Hollywood does not want Dave Batista in the Gears of War movie, yeah. which is where. The, if it was to be made now, I think everyone's just kind of got that image of Dave Batista. See, the thing is, this was before he obviously got into acting yeah. and yeah. became. Like, I think Dave Batista is a really underrated actor. Mm-hmm. Like, he's great in Guardians. He was great in James Bond. He was great in Blade Runner. Like, he genuinely is a good actor, and he can. He showed in um, Blade Runner that he can do the more soft moments. Yeah. He did. He showed that in, in which is obviously key for Gears of War. Yeah, it's emotional sometimes. But then I was like. Oh, Gears of War, that would be nice, yeah, but I, I don't know who I'd cast as the rest of them. So I went with God of War because I think that is obviously one of the best franchises of all time. Oh, I, yeah. I kept Classic Dave PlayStation yeah. game, that. I, I kept Dave Bautista as Kratos because I think Boy. he's got the build. He's got the build and can he's we got cast the Chris? Can we, can we cast Chris as the boy? Can we cast Chris as boy. the boy? Yeah, boy. Get boy. down from that boy. Yeah, have you seen the boy montage? Yes. It's just like I have seven seen minutes long. <laughs> yes, I have seen the boy montage. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, I think Dave Batista would do an incredible job as Kratos. And then you've got Atreus, who I cast as Noah Dupe, who is the kid from A Quiet Place. Oh, God. Like the, yeah. So he's obviously got that dramatic acting chops sort of thing. Uh, I just didn't want to go with one of the kids from The Stranger Things or from It. Because oh, yeah, I think they're all a bit too it out there now. Yeah. Like, and then there's Jacob Tremblay, who like is a really good actor. I just don't think he's tall enough. Okay. Well. <laughs> well, so um, I'm being really picky, and I just think those two together would be really good. Um, and then you have got Freya, who I I did as Kate Winslet. One because it brings love Kate star Winslet. power, and you know, great actress. Mm-hmm. Can't really doubt her. Can't go wrong. Dyer Air Brown. She kind of looks like her as well. So, like, I did a Photoshop. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Then we've got, like, the main body of it, the overarching body, which is Boulder. And I said Christian Bale for that. Mm. One, Mm. because I'd love him to play a villain. Yeah, has he ever done a villain? Um, Christian Bale himself is a villain. He has in The Prestige, I guess. Do you think? Yeah, The Prestige. I kind of clash that as a a villain. Is he typecasted now, though? As, no. as a good guy. Because no. to be fair, Batman is not technically a good guy, is he? Well, he's an anti hero, yeah. but you know. But also, uh, Christian Bale. It's not what we do that defies it. Christian Bale's not a nice human being. Yeah. That's okay. But I, I think him tatted up, long, scraggly hair and the beard that he's already got, mm-hmm. losing like a crap ton of weight like he did in the machinist and then putting it all back on like he's just done for Ford and Ferrari and getting absolutely hench. Mm-hmm. And just seeing him fight Dave Batista, it's kind of like, I, yes, Go ahead. Can we not just go with the the go to muscly man bad guy and just just get Tom Hardy instead? See, I thought about Tom Hardy, but then I was like, it doesn't kind of fit the look for yeah. Boulder. Like Tom Hardy would be good. Like maybe like if he did a Bane sort of thing again, he would yeah. be good as Kratos, I mm. think. But I just love Dave Batista for that role so much. Hear me out. Hear me out. 
and I need to I need to Google I'm what the guy's listening. character I'm is. Listening. All right. Mm-hmm. So you've seen Game of Thrones, right? Everyone seen? Has everyone seen Game of Thrones? Never heard of it. Christopher Kivju, is that his name? Um, guy with the massive ginger beard. I'm going to show you a picture of him right yeah, now. Okay. Yes. Or Tormund. Tormund. Yeah. Okay. I I I'm I've got both pictures side by side, and they are the they are the same human being, except not ginger, and I I can see that happening. I can see, I can see it happening. I just for me because it's Hollywood. I think they'd want someone star with a bit power. More star power. I guess. Yeah, I can't yeah. think after Guardians of the Galaxy and everything like that. Dave Batista brings that, and then you've got Bale alongside and everything. And then I have Magni and Modi. So Thor's sons, who you kill. Uh, spoilers. Um, <laughs> so I've not even played it yet. I've played halfway through or like a quarter of the way through. Thanks, Elliot. You're welcome. Um, so Magni and Modi, I had as Kevin Hart and The Rock. Because I think that would be one hilarious just to see them as brothers, yeah. like and two, like Kevin Hart beefed up, wielding his Thor's son. I think would also the, be hilarious. The issue and you is need that, a bit of comic relief. Yeah, but the issue with that is does the star does does Kevin Hart and the Rock star as secondary roles? Mm. See, the thing is, I think because they're not in the game that much, like they show up for a cutscene or two and then you kill them. Like, so yeah, I'm thinking, I just don't think that would ever happen with them too. I don't know. The, the Rock is not a cameo artist. He's a star. The star other guys, lead. when when the other guys came out, that was everyone thought that was going to be Sam L. Jackson and The Rock as the main characters, and they were going to be all the thing. And then it switched. They jumped off the top of the Empire State Building onto some patio. That was 2010, though. Yeah. In the, in the last 10 years, The Rock has become the highest paid actor in, in, in I reckon Hollywood. If you said to him, I reckon if you got Kevin Hart and said, Kevin, do you want to do this? It's like a a five day shoot we'll pay you this much amount of money we want you to bring in the rock as well to be your brother i just i think they'd like that sort of dynamic of them just messing around as two brothers being a comic relief for the film i don't I, I, do I, I don't think i'd ever see them as secondary character. i don't think the whole point of the rock is he drives the, the movie and i don't think he would ever drive a movie that he's not the main star power of. if he could do it i'd definitely like to see it i mean if if there was some way to get them to obviously do that would be fucking, fucking great but I think there is. I think there is. Okay. I right. say it like I'm casting this yeah, trailer yeah. and it's really well, You never know. You, anything, <laughs> anything can happen. I have got good news about it, though. It is in development. However, bad news. It was, So it was written by uh, Rotom Edition's David Self. Pretty good. And then it was rewritten by the people who st- who directed Piranha 3 Double D. Nice. <laughs> um, and there's only a $150 million budget. So take from That's that how bad. you will. I, I don't know what's a good budget like this, that's a good solid budget that's 150 million apparently the studio is letting the writers go nuts with the script it's not going to follow the game as much Dave Bautista might be playing Kratos <laughs> there we and, go uh, we will in this. the movie we'll, we, we will see Kratos' then, backstory oh yeah but then that's just the first game <laughs> well I think we'll, we'll probably dive more into it I guess yeah. But and then I've got final three so Mimir which is like the guy whose head you cut off from the tree and he's immortal and he just spouts absolute bollocks all game and he's like your guide i had that between two people because he sounded scottish to me i don't know if he is scottish but he sounded really scottish to me so i went with either david tennant mm, in his original sense. scottish accent yeah. or ewan mcgregor because they both of those especially Ooh. after because i thought ewan mcgregor was really good as black mask i thought he did all right in the fantabulous emancipation of harley quinn What's um, the title? Yes. So Birds it. of Prey, if you want to call it the short name. Yeah. And then David Tennant did really good in Jessica Jones. And he's he can be comical. Like he's doing a BBC series at the minute with Michael Sheen, which is basically like them two pretending to be actors and trying to get work during COVID. And it is fabulous. I was about to say something else there. <laughs> it was it's absolutely great. Um and then I have Brock and Sindri, who are the dwarf brothers who um, get into an argument and then you have to make them up um, and they they forge racks and I had Brock as Danny DeVito <laughs> because why would you not? And I had Sindri <laughs> as Elijah Wood because I think those two squibbling and arguing and... But they look like brothers. They don't, which is, but neither do, they don't look like brothers in the game either. So it's kind of like that works one of them. Yeah. Like Sindri is kind of like thinner... A little bit taller than Brock, so Elijah Wood kind of suits that, and I reckon he can bring like his uh, Dirk Gently sort of thing that he did uh, to that. And then Brock, Danny DeVito, I think it'd be a change of pace to see Danny DeVito as a grumpy troll, 
like <laughs> because I've seen him so much and like always oh, sunny and everything he's in he's always really out there yeah. or comedic or something just seeing him really serious really grumpy and just whipping sarcastic quotes that yeah I think would be amazing so yeah that's you, my god of war did you see that petition to get Danny DeVito to voice Pikachu in Detective oh, Pikachu I, I didn't know but I wish I signed it my vote might have made a difference who knows it could have made the difference key points basically is that Atreus turns out to be low key and like it's all a massive there and then that leaves on a cliff does this happen in the newest game yeah I'm going to leave this podcast if you don't shut up. It's been I, out for a I while. You, can you I tell you a quick story? Right, me and Elliot went to university together, right? And I was midway through watching um, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I'd say midway through. No, I lied. I was on season two. There's about 14 seasons. Really excited. Really great. Love this. You know, I never, never really watched Scrubs. So I was like, you know, my first kind of like medical drama. Loads of stuff going on. Everyone's alive. It's great. Why would they die? They work in a hospital. What's going to happen? So anyway, we, um, we get tasked to do a, um, a presentation together. And Elliot assigns me to report on every character death that happens between season two and season 14. So I had to put together a 10, 15 minute presentation about the 10, 11 characters or so that, that die. So Elliot's one for ruining things for me. And now he's just ruining God of War. <laughs> so any more spoilers? I mean, in all fairness, you started Grey's Anatomy about five or six years after it came out. Ah, but you said it's been 10 years for God of War, and that's why you spoiled it for me. The new one is still quite It's new. like two years, three years. Yeah, it's 2018. Still, still that's, that's well past the statute of limitations. Statute. <laughs> like, that's well past I'm it. still waiting to buy a PS4. Oh, so there you go. I was waiting for that game. Well, now you know. So Can what we... is your game that you would like to see made into a film? Don't say The Witcher. Please don't say the picture. Any game that you believe that... I mean, to be fair, the Tom Clancy games will most likely be made all into films. Mm, I don't know. I don't think they would. Mm. I, no, I mean, we've already mentioned Rainbow Six Vegas, but you could make... Not not that game itself, but there is there, there is a bit of a story there, I'd say. Okay. But just to focus on the... the uh, what do you call it? The strategic and the breaching and... Yeah. All that that would be quite good, but it's not terribly story driven. I yeah. think that would be like a, a solid six out of ten on IMDb. Fair enough. Well, to be fair, most game things get a six out of ten on IMDb. Do you have a game? Do you think that would be made into a film, or do you just think that they shouldn't be? Um, I think there's a reason they were made into a game in the first place. Yeah, because you can do more in a hundred hours than you can show in two hours. Yeah, and especially like RPG. So they're coming out with the Fallout series on, is it Amazon? For Amazon, a TV yeah. show? Yeah, Amazon. Which looks good, but I think RPGs are probably, and again, I mean, they've done this with The Witcher, but that's based on the book, so it's fine. But RPGs are probably the worst thing to turn into a predefined story. And if they don't have the, the glitches that, that are in the game. Choice, if they don't have the glitches that are in the game in the film as well, it's not going to be true to life, is it? Oh, no, yeah. The Bethesda books. <laughs> yeah. The easiest ones to turn into are you, you single-person shooters and you, you book and mashing games because that's just easier. There's no, know, there's no choice there. There's so games. much yeah. in I an think... RPG, like Skyrim, there's so much material there to make a film. I mean, an RPG is probably the easiest thing to turn into a thing because the idea of like a mythical land and okay. you've got so much to work for but also Go on, yeah. world of, I'll, but I'll, also world of warcraft movie absolutely the worst thing i've ever seen <laughs> okay so i think you're on my point here as well in the in the film if you do skyrim as a film what would you want that film to be would you want him to go to the red cloaks or would you want him to go and go to the others or would you want them to be a necromancer or do you want him to go in okay like, so there's too many overarching stories in an RPG but that, for it to be concise. It's why Warhammer failed. But it's the eventual thing is just close the Oblivion Gates. So if, and then the next one's, oh, find the Elder Scrolls. It doesn't have to be like, oh, stop, I took an arrow to the knee. It doesn't have to have like the game's elements. There's so much in that story that you can make the film. At the end of the day, close the Oblivion Gates, get the Elder Scrolls, boom, you win the game. Yeah, that's, that's point A and point B. But the game is everything in between. Yeah. And yeah, you've yeah, got to the... translate everything in between into it. But it doesn't have to be one character. It doesn't have to be a central character that does it. You can have multiple different characters who are in different factions. Yeah, so this is the thing I was going to mention. Um, uh, that Black Mirror thing, Bandersnatch, whatever. Yeah. You do 
an episodic piece like that where it's Ooh. choose your own adventure. He's got you there. That would be good. He's got you there. Now you can choose. I've not played Skyrim, but now you can choose your own red cloaks and all that. Did Sorry. you say you've not played Skyrim? We've established this. Oh, you haven't established this with me, Chris. You've not. I've played. Ever. I've played Skyrim with guns. What which you, is, which, oh, you've modded it. Oh, bro. No, that's just Fallout. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I want to move on from this subject now, please. I don't. I'm, I'm, freak, I'm really hurt from that. So we've got we've got God of War and Gears of War. Chris hasn't played Skyrim. Um, I don't even. I, personally, just because I've played it now, and just because I want to see more people get triggered, I want Last of Us to be made into a fully fledged movie. But the thing is, like when you play the game, it's practically a movie yeah, anyway. I don't think there's much. So I don't feel like so, it needs to be. So all. many articles. When Last of Us came out, and the, the the titles of the articles were the best movie of this year wasn't a movie; it was yeah. The Last of Us, and it's there's no point yeah, because I, it's true. Yeah, it, it'd be great to see it as a movie, but also it's it's one of those things that like if it came out, I'd watch it. I'd definitely pay my pay the money to go see it in the cinema. But also, it's if a game is most because I feel I've always felt like Last of Us is a movie with gameplay elements. Like yes. you. You go and kill the zombies for 15 minutes and then boom, you've got 20 minutes of cutscenes. And that's okay. That's what I like. But yeah, in a movie sense, maybe not actually. I'm not thinking that again. I don't know then, to be fair. Any any Final Fantasy film. <laughs> Just <laughs> anything Final Fantasy any final, To be fair, like if I had a Final Fantasy 10 film, I probably would. Like I, That'd be the best thing that ever happened to me, but it's never going to happen. They've done, oh, they they've done Final Fantasy films. She had Final Fantasy 7, they made... Because of the ending, people were a little bit confused as to like, what the hell's going on. They made Advent Children and stuff like that. They made a load of spin-offs. Um, same with Final Fantasy XV. They made King's... <laughs> this is actually really funny. You, Final Fantasy XV, you, you start the story off and you're like the, so, you're the son of this king, but you don't know anything about the king. You have to buy the film to find out. So you have to buy the film and watch the film to figure it all out. Um, but it's great. But apart from that, Elliot's writing something down and his pen's not working. What are you trying to... It's okay, I got it. It's because I didn't want to be on my phone when okay. anything, but now it's going to cook to me on my phone. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to purpose the um, show. Yeah. Dishonored, I've not finished. I keep trying to play it, mm -hmm. but that's a really good stealth game again. I mean, you brought up uh, Chaos Theory. Mm. Um, but that's quite a good story, I thought, and that wouldn't suffer, I think, from being converted into a film. Assassin's Creed, though. Assassin, and this is the other thing, yeah, there's, there's a few games where it's like, actually, the gameplay itself, especially now with the Assassin's Creed games, I find them too open worldy, and it's just a whole bunch of blah mm -hmm. for me. Um, the better adapted as a, as a film. Mm. I'm like, why is this a game? And this is, the, I've mentioned this before the podcast, but Red Dead Redemption 2, I've not played, I've only played a bit of it, but it's just so slow, and there's so many cutscenes, and the cutscenes are so long, it's... It's literally a movie, a movie with game elements rather than the other yeah. way around. And I think, not that I'm saying Red Dead should be a film, but it kind of should. <laughs> it, it would be great. It would be great. Okay then. All right. So let's should we do a round of what we've talked about? Yeah. Or do you want to? Do you want to bring up your point? One more thing. I I will think of this because if anyone's listening to this, they need to watch this. And it's a, a series on YouTube of short films called Astartes. Or Astartes, or however you pronounce it. Astartes. Astartes. You can tell us what it is. Yeah, so basically, it's based on Warhammer 40k. Ah, uh, yes. And it is the... It's one guy who does it, and you you put all that stuff together, you think, oh, it's going to be really crap. Mm -hmm. It's going to be atrocious. It is one of the most beautifully done short films connecting I've ever seen. Like, it is amazing. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Okay. To be fair, though, a lot of online people like, like Corridor Digital and stuff like that. They're doing they're doing better stuff than like most of Hollywood. So, all right. So we talked about which games deserve a remaster, which remakes have impressed us the most that we've played. Found out that Chris hasn't played any of them, and then which games we think deserve to go into Hollywood block, blockbuster, and which would we choose? And I think you were the you were really the only one that casted it. You you yeah. went deep on that one. I, went, which is I great. really got into that. Like really, I like I, I did I did a few more. So like I'm I, under yeah. the impression that my favorite game being remastered. I I don't know who I would even pick for the cast. I didn't think that because the characters themselves are the cast, aren't they? So it's one of those. Um, you just get the voice actors. No. Just be like, I don't no, care how bad you are. No, just, absolutely not. There's a few times no. that works, and no, a few no, times no. there isn't. It's like in Star Wars. Like Star Wars, um, Ray Park played Darth Maul, and obviously he's alive, and like. Darth Maul shows himself in Solo and all yeah. that sort of stuff. But he's actually dubbed over <laughs> by the voice actor who played Darth Maul from the series. 
yeah. like from the Clone Wars. And it's when the voices it, don't match up, though, it's like. wor- it, no, it works so much because obviously in the first one, Ray Park's never been the voice of Darth Maul; it's mm. always just been the body. But then, if you make a game on, I mean, I'm filming off the game that needs to look like the characters and the voice actors for like Final Fantasy X, for example, don't, they don't look anything like it. Like no, the guy but, who does the voice for the main character does like uh, Ratchet and Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> He doesn't. He oh he does not look like him at all. I only found that out last year. I played this game what seventeen times over the past what twenty years. Yeah, that's probably it's a, it's it's the same as when I figured out that Jessica in Suits also plays um I forget her name the warlock in Destiny. Blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. I was like I, the whole way through. I was like okay. she sounds so. I don't know who it was. I think his sister, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, um, <laughs> what, this is a sore subject. Yeah, no. uh, Grey's Anatomy, uh, Patrick Dempsey's whatever, his sister yep. in the thing. She plays Lara Croft. That's nice. She voices Lara Croft. She probably dies as well. No, but he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Anyway, and then we talked about, yeah, Hollywood Blockbuster. <laughs> found out that Chris hasn't played Skyrim, which I feel like is just <laughs> injustice. Chris hasn't played any games and hasn't watched any films. <laughs> Chris just, the, the unfortunate fact is that Chris spends his entire time benchmarking for the YouTube channel. That he doesn't have spare time for himself. So that's that's how it is. <laughs> I'm going to get you a t-shirt. It's just eat, sleep, benchmark, repeat. And then just... I think you'd like that too. Secret Santa yeah. gift incoming. Yeah. All right, so episode two. July. <laughs> Episode two. What? Yeah, but it's, it's like, you know. Just buy it now. Yeah. Just preempt. Exactly. You don't know what the delivery time is going to be like with COVID. So. Let's try. I've been waiting for a hoodie for like seven weeks. Now. Exactly. So you never know. All right. So this was episode two of the podcast. I think it went pretty well. We, we tried to keep it under an hour. Episode two of 73. Yeah, you've only got 71 more. That was quick maths. That. Did you see that? That was great. Yeah. Wow. Chris is a physicist. You He's impressed. two away there. You need to calm down. <laughs> yeah. So. We could do half podcasts. Half podcast. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, I like a long. Uh, personally, when I watch podcasts, I like it to be a longer form. Um, if anyone made it to the end, then let us know if you like a longer podcast or a short podcast. We were going to try and keep it under thirty minutes, but to be honest, you end up restricting yourself in terms of things that you want to talk about when it's you go. Just there. so much juicy content and exactly. just Chris's velvety tones. You Honestly, just... the ASMR of Chris's voice going through this headset just relaxes me, and I want to stay here for an hour. So maybe that's what it is. Yeah. All right. Well done, Chris. Perfect. So this was episode two. Um, we talked about the remasters and remakes that we want to see and a bit more things like that. Um, this podcast is available on Spotify. You might be listening to it on Spotify by now. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Elliot's the one sorting that out. If it's not on Spotify, it's his fault. Um, you can email him at elliot.smith at bgfu.co.uk. So that's, that's perfectly fine. Ah, uh, yes. The current, the current year method. What did you just call me, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> the current year method of contacting people, yeah. emailing them. Yes. So, Yeah. <laughs> So wherever you're listening on this, whether it be YouTube or Spotify, we hope you enjoyed it. If you are on YouTube, though, go ahead and give us a like. What can you do on Spotify? Can you, just, you can like it on you Spotify, can right? You can subscribe. Like it. You can, can, subscribe, can we subscribe to, to us? Yeah. Oh, is that SoundCloud? I don't One know. Of them. Follow us we on should probably Spotify. Know huh? Review. review. Leave us a review. That, yeah. Follow our profile. Is that going to have to go into our outro now? Like, thank um, you for watching. Leave us a review. I like that. Ooh. So, thank you for watching or listening to the podcast. And we will see you in next week's episode with different guests. I might so, not be there. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's why we have different guests. But cool. All right. Thank you for watching or listening. Yeah.